Hello everyone and welcome back to another noir video of this 2021 Noir November challenge. Today we're here to talk about a film I came across following my discovery journey with Richard Widmark's filmography, something that I discussed in a video that I published this year. And as I said, as I watched more Richard Widmark movies, I came across a film like Don't Bother to Knock, released in 1952 and directed by Roy Baker. I stepped into that room, I ran smack into an adventure you don't forget in a long time. Because the screen has never shown this kind of woman before. The kind that reaches out in the loneliness of the night to a stranger passing by. I should have seen the warning of danger in her eyes. But what happened in that suspense-filled night was about to change my entire life. <laughs> Now this is a film that, as I was saying, I came across quite by chance and it really surprised me in the best possible way, but not only for Richard Whitmark, but for Marilyn Monroe. You crashed in the water. I've cracked up a couple of times, water in and land. In the ocean in 46 on the way to Hawaii. But you weren't killed. You were only lost. Hey, wait a because if there is someone who is absolutely outstanding in Don't Bother to Knock is Marilyn Monroe. Not that the rest of the cast isn't good because they are terrific, we'll cover that later on. But specifically Marilyn Monroe I think deserves more credit for the work she did on screen. Also this film I feel that deserves more attention. So that is why I'm here discussing this film and I wanted to include it in this year's November. Don't Bother to Knock is yet another film that is really fast. It only lasts in this case for 76 minutes. So only three more than Desperate which we covered last week. And it is quite an intense absorbing tale with Marilyn Monroe playing quite an astonishing part as a babysitter. So if you come from a generation that was terrified with Rebecca de Mornay as a babysitter in The Hand That Rocks the Cradle, beware with Marilyn Monroe in Don't Bother to Knock. Her character Nell is another level of her playing a part so genuinely that it really leaves you speechless, at least that was my reaction. She has the tricky task in this film of portraying a woman with psychotic disorder with psychiatric problems and she does it in such a fashion that it feels tragic but it also feels incredibly tender, sensitive, touching and genuine. There is nothing salacious about her part which could have been easily turned into a non-dimensional villain. In her hands there is an incredible humanity. The movie starts really with Richard Widmark who plays a pilot who has just had a very sour date with his girlfriend played superbly by Anne Bancroft in her film debut. I believe in a drink, a kiss, and a laugh now and then. I still like to laugh, but not at myself. But everything takes a turn the moment that Marilyn Monroe enters the scene. At the time, she was on the brink of becoming the huge star and sex symbol that we are all familiar with. In the early 50s, after a series of bit parts that caught the attention of producers and the public in films like All About Eve or The Asphalt Jungle. Well done. I can see your career rising in the east like the sun. 20th Century Fox, the studio that produced Don't Bother to Knock and other famous Marilyn Monroe films, decided to provide more prominent roles for her. And that's the case with Don't Bother to Knock in 1952. It was a year in which she also appeared in films like The Noir, Clash by Night, and the comedies We're Not Married or Whore Hogs Monkey Business. In Don't Bother to Knock though is the first time she got a more protagonist and more prominent role, building up again to that sex symbol status that she would achieve just a year later with the release of a film like Niagara. Initially in her career she would juggle I would say those two different genres, if you will, the thrillers and then the musical comedies. But it is the latter, the one for which she is mostly recognized. But again, there are other films like this one that I think really deserve more attention because you get to see her in 
a totally different light and you get to see what she was capable of doing with other types of parts. It was also quite incredible for me to read that initially it was Dorothy McGuire who was linked to playing this part in Don't Bother to Knock and as much as I love Dorothy I can't imagine anyone but Marilyn Monroe in this role but as I said before the rest of the cast also deserves quite our attention in Don't Bother to Knock. First of all we have fantastic Richard Widmark that we have already covered in different videos and certainly it is November when we talked about a film like Night in the City. He plays a cynical man always believing the worst in everyone he meets. All right, I'm sorry. Sometimes I'm cynical. I just focus on the simple facts. On the opposite spectrum, we have the part that Anne Bancroft plays as his girlfriend. She plays a lounge singer in this film. Again, her film debut. She has quite a smaller part considering, but the impression she left in the director of this film, and obviously the audience as well, was not at all something to dismiss. Also in the supporting cast here, we have wonderful Elisha Cook Jr in Don't Bother to Knock, he plays Marilyn Monroe's uncle. I also have to mention actors Jim Packus and Lorraine Tuttle, who play the married couple, the parents of the little girl that Marilyn Monroe's character Nell babysits. And I have to say also that the little girl who plays Bunny in Don't Bother to Knock, Donna Corcoran, does also a splendid job in a film that is quite challenging for her in many aspects. She was a sister in a family of quite a lot of child actors, most notably Kevin Corcoran, who appeared in many classic Disney live action films. It is very important to note also that this film was based upon a novel called Mischief and written by Charlotte Armstrong and adapted for the screen by Daniel Teradash. Charlotte Armstrong was an author who after having several jobs and writing poems and plays shifted towards the mystery suspense genre for which she truly achieved acclaim and became known for. She saw several of her stories and novels translated to the screen. The first one was The Unsuspected, which was turned into a film and directed by Michael Curtiz, starring Claude Rains, Joan Caulfield, and Audrey Totter. This movie was produced by Warner Brothers, and with this story, she began to really get more attention and more respect for her way of generating suspense within a more domestic and environment. Then came her novel Mischief, which was again brought to the screen by 20th Century Fox, and later on it was French director Claude Chabrol, the one who adapted for the screen two of her novels, The Balloon Man and The Chocolate Cobweb. She again became a master of the suspense mystery genre, and in 1956 she received the Best Novel Award for A Dram of Poison by the Mystery Writers of America, and although she passed away at the age of 64, she left an indelible mark in mystery and suspense fiction. And so Charlotte Armstrong's work must be pointed out and celebrated. I have to say that I read the novel Mischief. It is quite a short novel, a little over 140 pages, and it really builds up like fire. The suspense is of the charts. It is clever and outstanding. A little different from the film, I have to say, in several points, but in terms of maintaining the tone and the suspense that Charlotte achieves, I have to say that Daniel Teradash's work is quite good in Don't Bother to Knock. I would say that the essence of the novel is in the film, but perhaps the character of Marilyn Monroe, Nell, is more enhanced, I should say, in the film than it is in the novel. The story is a psychological thriller with a certain final moral message about the necessity of trusting one another and not being so cynical and closed off. And this is something, again, that Richard Widmark portrays to perfection. And as I have also read, this has been also interpreted as a sort of a political allegory of the McCarthy era with all the suspicion and prosecution going on towards 
communism. I have to say also that seeing this film from today's perspective, what is also very prominent is the issue of mental health, again personified in this case by the character that Marilyn Monroe plays. And what it was quite surprising for me is that it is portrayed in a way that is compassionate. And I feel it also exposes in a way the role that the system plays in these situations as well. So as you can see, even though this movie was released in 1952, there is quite a contemporary approach. Another very important figure in terms of making Don't Bother to Knock work was its director, British filmmaker Roy Ward Baker, a filmmaker who had a somewhat curious career, if you will. He had again initially worked in England, where he was from, even becoming assistant director for Alfred Hitchcock for the terrific movie The Lady Vanishes. And as I have read, he really learned a lot from the way Hitchcock shot when he worked with him. Also, he learned from other British filmmakers of the time, like David Lean and Carol read but particularly in terms of planning the way he shot scenes he learned again a lot from Alfred Hitchcock. He released a World War II movie in 1950 called Morning Departure which garnered him lots of international attention and he was brought to Hollywood in the early 50s by Daryl Zanuck from 20th Century Fox and for that studio he directed films like again Don't Bother to Knock but also other vehicles for 20th Century Fox stars like Tyrion Power or Linda Darnell in films like The House in the Square, which was called I'll Never Forget You in the US or Night Without Sleep. But despite this big opportunity, Roy Baker never felt quite at home in Hollywood and he eventually returned to England by the end of the decade. And after releasing a film like A Night to Remember, he concluded his career by directing several horror films for Hammer and doing some television work. There is a certain element of realism in this again very suspenseful oriented story that works wonders in Don't Bother to Knock. Cinematography in Don't Bother to Knock was by Lucien Ballard, whom I mentioned when I talked about the film The Killing. And his work in this film, it doesn't have a prominent expressionist use of light and shadow, but more of a realistic, non-invasive kind of style that works really well for the film, in my opinion. So as always, I hope that I have given you enough reasons to give Don't Bother to Knock a try if you haven't already. This is a film that definitely deserves you sitting down with it and probably watching with someone else so that you can discuss. It is a terrific story, one that really gets you again by surprise. But in any case, thank you so much for watching and for joining me today for another video. And as always, take care, stay safe, and see you all very soon with another noir video. Bye!